Hello everyone, welcome to a new video by Teach Me to Science, which is me, Saren. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please subscribe and like my channel. Here are all my social medias in case you would like to creep on me, feel free. Um, check out what I do in my regular life, not just my life at school and my, not just my life as a TA. Um, also, if you guys could subscribe, like, and comment on this channel. Um, comment on this video if you see any mistakes. Please, I um, am human, so if you see mistakes, please let me know. Or if you just have something to say, like, hey, Saren, I'm not good at converting yet, but I really need some help. Could you uh, give me some tips? Absolutely. I would love to give you tips about how to do unit conversions. Um, also, if you could like this video and let me know how I'm doing, if I'm doing a good job. If you like this video, I'm assuming that I'm doing an okay job and I should keep doing this. Um, also, please subscribe so you don't ever miss a video because I want you to learn as much about chemistry as possible. So, subscribe so you can keep learning with me. Alright, so today we're going to be talking about dimensional analysis. So, what is dimensional analysis? So, dimensional analysis is basically a unit conversion. So, let's say that you have a recipe and it calls for two ounces of milk let's say milk so it calls for two ounces of milk but all you have in your kitchen is a measuring glass that measures in milliliters so to be able to convert from the two ounces of milk and figure out how many milliliters of milk you need to add to your recipe you need to convert from ounces to milliliters so you can figure out how much you need to measure out so why is it useful? It's super useful in an instant, just like the one I described. So I'm just gonna say you're given units and you need other units. That's just like what I described with this kitchen example. Um, you're given ounces of milk in the recipe, but all you have is something that measures out milliliters. So you just need to convert from ounces to milliliters to be able to measure that out. So that's why it's useful. All right, and like I said, dimensional analysis is basically one big unit conversion. So it's just converting units from one form to another. Some key units that you absolutely, absolutely need to know are the following. You absolutely need to know those, 100%. If you can, you should also know these ones in blue. So those are the ones that are gonna be super helpful, but at the bare minimum, you need to know these. And what these are, they're just a way for you to convert from your base unit here to different kinds of units. So let's say you're measuring out something with a yardstick. So you've got this line and you're measuring it. Well, you know that it's 120 centimeters. How many meters is it? So what you can do is you can convert, if meters is your base unit here, you can convert from um, 220 centimeters to meters. And you do that by these base conversions that you just know. You know that for every one decameter, you have 10 to the 1 meters. For every one hectometer, you have 10 to the 2 meters. Same thing for kilometers. For every one kilometer, you have 10 to the 3rd meters. And you can also go, um, this is where it gets a little bit different, because for every one megameter, you have 10 to the 6th meters, so it doesn't just go 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, but then it goes the same way in the reverse direction. For every one decimeter, you have 10 to the minus 1 meters and so forth and so on and same thing negative six negative nine negative 12. okay so what about this problem that we just set up where we have 120 centimeters and we need to convert that to meters so you go over here and you look at your 
centimeters. And for every one meter, you have a hundred centimeters. You can also write this as for every one centimeter, for every one centimeter, you have 10 to the minus two meters. These are the same. Same unit conversion will give you the same answer. You can even prove it to yourself by doing those calculations quick. Um, and you're like, Saren, why do you have this little crown up here? Because I've got a quick little saying to help me remember kilo through minute. You're like, Saren, what does that even make a difference for? Well, King Henry died while drinking chocolate milk. If you look at the list I drew of kilo through milli, you'll notice that the first letter of each word corresponds with kilo through milli, um, except for this while. This while is just the base units. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the mole, and we're not talking about this cute little guy right here. Not the mole. Although he is very cute, we are not talking about the mole. So the mole we're talking about here is another unit conversion, and it's commonly used in chemistry to help simplify things, and it's really used a lot when we're talking about reactions. So one mole, the unit conversion of one mole is Avogadro's number, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So for every 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, we have one mole. So this is a super big number right there. And the reason that we kind of condense it into a mole and simplify it is so that it's an easier number to work with. Um, so this is how you can convert from atoms to moles, but what about if you want to convert from grams to moles? So all of the previous examples that we had done were in like kilograms, kilometers, things like that, um, things that are more common. So if you want to convert from grams to moles, you use this thing called molar mass. And what molar mass is, is, um, so say you've got two grams of water and we want to convert it to, let's say, moles of water. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the molar mass and that's just a ratio of grams to moles to get moles of water. Now, how do you calculate this molar mass? So molar mass can be calculated by adding up the molecular weights of each element found within the compound. So adding up the molecular weight of each of these compounds will give you the overall molecular weight. The molecular weight of hydrogen is approximately one and you have two of them, and the molecular weight for oxygen is 16. So then you can add those up, so you get 18, 18 grams per one mole. And this is the molar mass of water. So what we could do is we could take this and we could put it in here. So for every one mole of water, we have 18 grams and then we can use it to convert to moles. Um, so two divided by 18 is one ninth, or one ninth. So yeah, so that's how many moles we would have in two grams of water. Also, mole, the mole is also super helpful. So say we've got water again, and water reacts in this form, or this fashion, to create water. So that's how water is created. If we wanna make, let's say we want two moles of water. Well, to get two moles of water, we need 
two moles of hy hydrogen and we need one mole one mole of oxygen so this is kind of the recipe to create water all right now we're going to do a practice problem so this practice problem is really going to help with cementing in your knowledge of the mole a recipe calls for two eggs three cups of flour and one cup of milk this recipe makes one cupcake. What is the molar ratio of eggs to cupcakes? Okay, so the first thing we can do is we can kind of set this up as an equation. So we can say two eggs plus three flour plus one milk creates one cupcake. All right, and now if we're trying to find the molar ratio of eggs to cupcakes, what we're really trying to say is how many eggs are required to create one cupcake? And we can find that out by going here. So we have two moles of eggs here. And to get one cupcake, we need two moles of eggs. So we have one mole of cupcake here. So the molar ratio of eggs to cupcakes is we need two moles of eggs for every one mole of cupcakes. And that's it. All we're trying to say is for every two moles of eggs, we can make one cupcake. And if we're trying to make one cupcake, we need two moles of eggs. That's all we're trying to say. All right, next practice problem. So I have two kilograms of salt. And let's say that this is salt for your aquarium. So some salt water aquariums require salt to be added. But you want to know how many moles of that salt you have. And your molar mass is this. So that's your molar mass that you're given. And you're trying to figure out how many moles of salt you have. And then from there, how many water changes could you do if you know for every one mole of salt, you have two moles of water. And let's say that your aquarium is it's 50 moles of water in your aquarium. So 50 moles of water in your aquarium. All right, how do we do this? So the first thing we need to do is we need to do two kilograms of salt and we need to convert that into moles. So the first thing is that there are, for every one kilogram, there are a thousand grams. So now we're in grams. Now what we can do is we can use our molar mass, which is 321 grams to one mole of salt. So there we go. Now we've converted to moles of salt. So we can just simply do this quick by multiplying across the top, multiplying across the bottom, and dividing those two numbers. So 2 times 1,000 is 2,000 divided by 321. So 2,000 divided by 321 equals 6.23 6 moles of salt. Okay, cool. So that's how many um, moles of salt we have. So first of all, we should figure out, is that amount of moles of salt going to be enough to add to our aquarium. So if we have 6.23 moles of salt and we know that for every one mole of salt we have two moles of water. So this amount of salt that we have is only good for that many moles of 
water. So we actually have, we have 50 moles of water that we need to do. So this is not enough salt. So this is not even enough salt for one water change. Well, what we can do though is we can figure out how much salt we would need. So for every 50 moles of salt or of water, we know that we need one mole of salt and we have um, the ratio is two to one. So we have 50 moles divided by two. We need at least 25 moles of salt to be able to do one water change. So this is not enough salt to even do one water change. So that's kind of a practical use of the mole. Um, so now let's just do a quick review of what we talked about today. So today we talked about dimensional analysis and we said that dimensional analysis is just a fancy way of saying a unit conversion. And we talked about how you would want to convert ounces to milliliters when you're cooking in your kitchen. And then we talked about these unit conversions that you have to know. So you have to know kilo through milli at least. Um, the more you know, the better. So if you can also know mega through micro and pico, then that would be even better. Um, and also we talked about this little saying down here to help you remember kilo through milli. Then we talked about the mole, um, and we talked about Avogadro's number, which is right here. So this is Avogadro's number, and it just relates atoms to moles, but we also talked about how molar mass relates moles to grams. And then we talked about how moles are very useful when you're looking at reactions and the ratio of reactants to products and so forth. Then we did a couple practice problems. So this first practice problem we did was really illustrating moles and molar ratios. So that's a really good example. And then we did this other practice problem, which really puts into perspective all the different ways that you can use the mole. Um, so that's all I think I have for today. So if you guys could be awesome and subscribe and like my channel, that would be super awesome. Also, comment if you see any mistakes, please, or comment if you have any questions. All right, bye!